finishing, we're continuing, but also we're finishing our series that is called Words to Live By. Everyone say words. Words are very important, and I believe that God has given us some words to live by as a church, and there are always words that change our lives in different ways, such as uh, the first day that we had just moved to Georgia this past September, so just uh, two months ago now, I guess, September the 22nd. So we were just, we had just moved to Georgia, my wife my uh, and I, our kids, and we had just closed on our house that morning. I believe it was a Friday morning. Is that right? A Friday morning? And, uh, And so we had just closed on our house. We went over to our new house. There were already church members at our new house around the house like ants. And so they were coming in, they were bringing food, and they were lining cabinets and drawers, hanging blinds. We're just so thankful for such a loving church. So there's church, there's some of you who are there, and people are just everywhere. And my wife drives up, and she drives up with people all over the place, and she's trying to have a private conversation with me, and people are all around. So I'm trying to focus on her and everyone else. And so finally she's like, would you please talk to me? So I, I, I heard the tone in her voice. And so, so I, I looked at her and said, what's going on? She said, well, I think I figured out our bedroom situation. It's a three-bedroom house, and uh, we weren't sure where to put kids and all that kind of stuff. You know, where to put Brooklyn, where to put Cruz. Brooklyn is our four-year-old daughter. Cruz is our one-year-old son. And so she said, I think we figured out the bedroom situation for the kids. I said, great. What is it? And she showed me a picture of bunk beds. She said, I think we need to get bunk beds. And I'm like, we don't need to get bunk beds. Why do we need to get bunk beds? We don't need to put them both in the same room. Why would we do that? Are the bunk beds for us? Like, what is going on? Why are we getting bunk beds? And so I'm asking all these questions. I'm trying to figure out there's people all around, all this kind of stuff. And she's like, "Just, just focus on me for a second. I said, okay, babe, what's going on? And then she held up a pregnancy stick. And she said a pregnancy test, and she said, we are pregnant. That's why we need bunk beds. And so we are just so thankful for all that God is doing. We wanted you to know. We wanted you to be of the first who knew we are. Uh, I say we, but really it's she. I get it. I know. That's what ladies love to remind me. It's not we are pregnant. She is pregnant. I know. I know. Um, and so uh, she is, we are about 11 weeks along right now. And uh, we did just do the blood test. So Lord willing, we'll know the gender here in, in just a couple of weeks. We have a boy and a girl. And so this will be the tiebreaker. And, uh, and just to see uh, what the Lord has given us. And so we really appreciate your prayers. Um, I was sharing with the family in here last week. Uh, just I, I just looked around because she was pregnant, this this lady, and, and, and I said, how, how you know, when's your due date? She said, we have 28 days, so today they have 21 days, and, and I, I looked around, no one was watching, no one was listening, I said, hey, we're not telling anybody yet, but we are pregnant too, and I said, the Lord has a sense of humor, because we just bought a three-bedroom house, we already have two kids, we're having a third, right, and I said, we just closed on the house that morning, and then we found out we're having our third that afternoon, they said, yeah, we get it, they said, we have a three-bedroom house, and this is number six. So I, I stand back. I stand back, and I get it. You know, people, we, we can do it. We can do this. So words to live by. Well, I believe that the words that the Lord has given us to live by as a church are so important because we could be doing a thousand things, but they're so important. It's so important about doing the same things, the same things together. I believe that when you do the same thing, you have synergy. Everyone say synergy. See, when you don't have synergy, it zaps your energy. You know what I'm saying? We need energy as a church, and that's through synergy as a church as we do the same things together. Those four words that we are seeking to live by as a church are very simply, they are worship. Everyone say worship. Worship, the way in which that we worship the one and only true God together as the church of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? These are our worship services at 9.30 and at 11. And then our second word is fellowship. Everyone say fellowship. Our fellowship, those are our groups, our connection groups, our Sunday school classes, our Bible studies. We can just put them all under one term. These are just our groups that we get to meet together and fellowship and do community with one another. Then we talked about our third word, which is serve. Everyone say serve. Serve is that important word because God 
has given every Christian a spiritual gift or more than one spiritual gift in order to serve in their church because it takes a church to reach a community. Can I get an amen? And then our last word today is this, mission. Everybody say mission. In fact, from Matthew 28, this morning we're going to be talking about one of the most famous and one of the most important passages of all Scripture. It's called the Great Commission. What is a commission? A commission is when we are on mission as a community. A commission is when we're on a mission together as a community. Whenever I think about mission, I often think about our military. We have Veterans Day coming up this coming Saturday of November 11. And so I always think about our military. Our, our military is called to deter the world from war and also to give our country security. By the way, if you are a veteran in the military, we want to celebrate you today as Veterans Day is coming up this Saturday. Would you mind just standing as we want to honor you and we want to thank you for your service? If you're a military veteran, please stand for us during this time. And let's go ahead and give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much for the way that you have served our country. Mission. Mission is so important. You know, if I could give you one simple definition of mission, it is this, and I want you to write it down. You'll see it on the screen. What is mission? Mission is living in such of a way every day that someone could get saved. Mission is living every day in such of a way that someone could get saved. If I can share with you about our mission as a church. Because if we're not careful, we'll think about passages like Matthew 28, verse 19, where Jesus told us, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. We'll look at our mission like that, and we'll think to ourselves, there's no way that I could ever accomplish that mission on my own. So sometimes we think, because I can't accomplish the whole mission, then I won't be a part of the mission that God has given me personally. But just like one soldier could never deter the world from war and one soldier could never protect the country, the military can. And also one Christian could never reach the nations for Jesus. One Christian could never reach a community for Jesus. But God brought us together as his children, as the church. Can I get an amen? And God has called us to accomplish this together. Can I share with you a few statistics about our mission? Did you know that within five-mile radius here of our church that it is projected in 2024 that there will be 121,000 people who live within a five-mile radius of our church? 121,000 people. It is projected to grow, our area is projected to grow by 2,000 people every year within a five-mile radius. Did you know that Cobb County is somewhere around 75, I'm sorry, 775,000 people? Paulding County is around 175,000 people. Did you know that that totals up to just under a million people in our two counties that God has called us to reach? By the way, as that sounds impossible, how could we ever reach a million people? Can I just blow your mind for a second? Did you know that there are just under 3,000 people on our church membership roll here at First Baptist Church, Powder Springs? Did you know that if 3,000 people share the gospel with one different person every day, then we could share the gospel with a million people in a year? Which means that if we just shared the gospel with a different person every day, then we could evangelize, we could witness to all of Cobb County and all of Paulding County combined together, just us together as First Baptist Church Powder Springs and everyone who calls our church their home. See, Jesus actually makes the mission very possible. Did you know that our community is made up somewhere within a five-mile radius of about 44% who are white or Caucasian, 42% who are black or African-American, 11% who are Hispanic or Latino, 
and about 4% of other ethnicities, including Pacific Islander, American Indian, Asian, and any and every other ethnicity. And by the way, every single ethnicity is important to God. Can I get an amen? Because every ethnicity is created in his image and is designed to give him glory. And we need to be a church that is reaching all ethnicities. Why? Because we believe that God has already given us the picture that it says that every tribe and every tongue and every language and every nation is going to be around the throne of Jesus Christ in eternity, but we don't have to wait till then. We, as the church of Jesus Christ, are an expression of that experience now. So we get to reach our community. And by the way, our church should reflect our community because we're not just called to be a church in the community rather we're called to be a church for the community if you believe that say amen it seems so impossible it seems so massive the mission does it seems so daunting and by the way if you feel like it is impossible there's a reason you feel that way it's because it is it's impossible when we try to do it on our own and in our own power. But isn't it incredible to think and to realize that Jesus is actually the ultimate missionary? That Jesus is the one who left his home, left his family, God being his father, other, other Christians, other believers known as the brothers and sisters of Christ already in heaven at that time, that Jesus left his family and he came to us left his home to come and to live among us, left his home to come and to serve us, left his home to come and be like one of us and to not only share with us, but to make the mission possible by dying for our sin, being buried for three days, raising from the dead. Why? Because the Bible says then the Holy Spirit can come and live inside of us, the very spirit of Jesus. So then we are empowered with the spirit of Christ, listen, to make the mission possible. So if we are to live in such of a way every day that someone could get saved, I want to give you two simple ways to do that this morning. Two powerful ways that Jesus gave us because I believe that he wants to make the impossible possible. He wants to make the powerful simple. Let me go ahead and give you the two ways then I'll explain them. The way number one is simply this, to follow Jesus. We follow Jesus with our life. You can write that down to follow Jesus. And number two, simply invite others with us. We follow Jesus and we invite others with us. Here we go. Number one, to follow Jesus. Everyone say follow. Here we go. To follow Jesus, what do we do? Let me give you three simple ways under following Jesus, how to follow Jesus every day. That empowers you for the mission. Number one, here we go. Write this down. Go where Jesus tells you to go. Go where Jesus tells you to go. Verse 16 of Matthew 28 says this. It says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Isn't it interesting that Jesus did not tell them what was going to happen on the mountain? He just told them to go to the mountain. I can imagine that Peter, James, and John probably ran to the mountain. Why? Because earlier... Jesus had just taken them alone to the mountain where Jesus was transfigured before their face. And they literally got to see the divinity, the brightness, the glory of Jesus transfigured before them. Jesus had called them to that mountain and they got to see the miracle not knowing what was going to happen there. And now Jesus called them to another mountain. All of the disciples and Jesus didn't tell them why, because Jesus loves surprises. Can I get an amen? He loves surprises. And he called them to the mountain because he didn't want them to miss the miracle. See, when we go where Jesus tells us to go, even when he, does, even when he doesn't tell us why to go there, it's because he has a miracle in store for us. When we don't go where Jesus tells us to go, then we miss the miracle. There are times that Jesus tells us to go, but we don't know why we're going. There are times, listen, that Jesus tells us to go that we don't know where we're going. 
Jesus called Abraham and he said this, I want you to go to a land that I will show you. Abraham didn't know he was going where he was going. He just knew he couldn't stay where he was. Just this week, I was at Johnny's Barbecue because I'm a Christian and I love barbecue. I literally, I told my wife this this week and I'm embarrassed, but I guess I'm maybe proud of it. I think I went to four different barbecue places for lunch this week because I'm Baptist. And uh, Johnny was on Tuesday with the staff and I just remember sitting there with the staff and I just saw a young family sitting right in front of me, just a couple tables down. And God just kept telling me, go talk to him, go talk to him, go talk to him. So I stood up after we all got done, and I just went and talked to him. And I just said, it was a young husband, young wife, dad, mom. They had a young son. And I just said, hey, I just want you to know, I see you. God sees you. We love you. God loves you. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor at a church just, just right here down the road. We would love for you to come. I don't know if you're here today. Um, and, and, but God just called me to talk to those people and take care of their meal. Why? I don't know why. But I know that God has a purpose for it. And I know that God calls us to go where he wants us to go because he wants us to live on mission. If you're following me, say amen. Amen. Next, Jesus says to worship him for who he is. To worship Jesus for who he is. Look at verse 17. It says, and when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Isn't it interesting that those who went still some of them still struggled with doubt. Can I just comfort you this morning? If you have any doubt, if you have any questions in life, any hurts or answers that you feel like that you need from God, can I comfort you that doubt is not the absence of faith. Doubt is the presence of questions. It's not if you have doubt, That's the issue. The issue is what you do with your doubt. Because I need you to hear me say this. There are some answers in life that God does not give us in this life. There are some things that God does not give us the reason. There are some things that God does not tell us why. Often he gives us answers. Often he gives us reasons. Often he tells us the why, but not all the time. Not until we understand him in the next life. Why? Because if he gave us all the answers, then we would not have to have faith. We would not have to trust. It's said that some worship, but some doubted. Doubt is the opposite of worship. In other words, What is the best weapon to fight our doubt that we deal with on a regular basis? Here's the weapon that God gives us, worship. Do you just worship on Sundays or do you open up those worship songs and you worship during the week? Do you worship Jesus through worship music because God uses it as a weapon in our life against doubt, against sin, against deception, against temptation? Worship is not just a Sunday thing. Worship is an everyday thing. I remember when on September 22, just a a few weeks ago, when when my wife told us that we were pregnant with our third, I'm just going to be honest with your pastor, I was not worshiping Jesus in that moment. I think I looked at her and said, you're going to tell me this right here, right now? Like, look at all these people around here. I can't even respond. But my mind automatically went to how are we going to do this? How are we going to work this out? How are we going to blah, 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 rather than, wow, God, you are doing this. Doubt is when we say, God, how, rather than God, wow. If you're like me, I often live in God, how land. God, how are you going to do this? God, what are you up to? God, how is this going to be possible? God, this is going to be whatever. Rather, God is saying, I just want you to trust me. I've got a great plan in this. You can worship me through this. Watch how I'm going to provide because here's the deal. If God only calls us to things we can do, then we don't need him. But God loves to call us to things in life that we cannot do on ourselves for God to show us how much we need him and how he wants to accomplish life through us in a way that only he can. Can I get an amen? 
worship Jesus for who he is. And then next, very quickly, the third way to follow Jesus this week is to obey what Jesus tells you to do. Obey what Jesus tells you to do. Verse 18, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Are you amazed? with the authority that Jesus has in the Bible. Jesus has authority over creation the way that he calms storms. Jesus has authority in the scriptures over all of evil in the way that he casted out demons. Jesus has authority in all the scripture over all humanity in the way that he would heal diseases and disorders and he would raise the dead, raising people from the dead. And listen to me, Jesus has the same authority in you and in me when we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can't save anybody. And you can't save anybody. We can't talk anybody into God. If there was a sure fire argument into somebody receiving Jesus that you knew if you said this one phrase, this one whatever, that they would get saved every time, we would know it by now. But listen to me. It's because salvation is not just a smart decision, it's a heart decision. The heart's got to change. The heart's got to be willing. The heart has to submit to Jesus, to his lordship, and to his kingship. The heart has to believe. And so that's why God says, just share my salvation plan. Just share my son. Just share the gospel and watch what I can do. Jesus is saying, all authority has on earth and in heaven has been given to me. So I want you to go in my authority, not your own. In other words, we don't have to fear because it's not us that can save him anyway. We're just the messenger. We're just the missionary. All we're called to do is to share the gospel, and so we need to obey what Jesus tells us to do. So here's what I believe. If we want to go where Jesus calls us to go, if we want to obey what Jesus tells us to obey, if we want to worship Jesus for who he is, how do we do that? Just very quickly, I believe it's this way. We get in God's word every day. We get in God's word every day. Why? Because I believe that when we get God's word in us, that's the way that God fills us with his spirit. And when God fills us with his spirit, that's the way that we get in tune with his voice. Amen? And that's what we want is God's voice in our life. The more I get in God's word, the more I get in God's spirit, the more I get in God's spirit, the more I get in tune with God. And when I'm in tune with God, that's how I know where I'm supposed to go and how I'm supposed to worship, and what I'm supposed to do. We need to follow Jesus. Everyone say follow. And then number two, we need to invite others with us. Everyone say invite. Invite. Here we go. Invite. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 19, you can write that down. He said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Salvation is following Jesus. That's what we're saved to. But what we're saved to do is to help others come to know Jesus. Let me show you three ways that we can invite others as we're living on mission. To invite others with you. The first way to invite others is to simply invite others to believe the gospel. Invite others to believe the gospel. Verse 19 in Matthew 28 says this, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Did you know that that word go literally means as you are going. It means wherever you are. In other words, he's not just talking about mission trips. I believe that mission trips are very important. I believe that God is going to call us together to go to the nations as a church and go on missions in other countries to share and to spread the gospel around the world. I believe that mission trips are important, but I also believe that every day is a mission trip in our community. Jesus is saying, as you go, make disciples. In other other words, as you go to work, as you go to school, as you go home in your neighborhood, as you go to be around family and with friends, as you go to the coffee shop, as you go shopping, as you go out to eat, as you go, he's saying every conversation is an opportunity to share the gospel 
and to share the name of Jesus with someone. He said, go therefore. What's the therefore? The therefore is that he has the authority. And what does he call us to do? To make disciples of all nations. What does it mean to make disciples? To see people saved to live in such of a way every day that someone could get saved. Can I share with you just a very simple way of sharing your faith with someone else? Would you write this down, please? It's not going to be on the screen. I want you to write this down, put it in your phone. A very simple way that anybody can do. I believe that evangelism is so easy, even a Christian can do it. Amen? So here we go. Write this down. You can write down the letters B.C., B, C, which means before Christ. In other words, whenever you're talking to someone and God places it on your heart to share the gospel with them, simply tell them what kind of person you were before you had Jesus. What was your life like before Christ? Tell them about, be honest with them, in who you were before Jesus, B, C. And then I want you to draw a cross. B, C, and then the cross. And the cross is this. You share with them how you gave your life to Jesus. And remember, if you know the gospel well enough to become a Christian, you know the gospel well enough then to help others become a Christian too. It's the same gospel that saves them that saved you. And so we tell them what it was like, our life was like before Jesus that connects us with them and their life. And then the cross, we get to share with them how Jesus saved us, that we believe in his death and in his resurrection and that he is the Lord of all life and we give our life to him. And then you can write down the letters A.D., Anno Denomini, it's just A.D., which means after, after death or in the year of our Lord. What is A.D.? What my life is like after Jesus. Now that I have Jesus. Now that Jesus has come into my life. What was my life was like before Jesus, how I gave my life to Jesus, and now the difference that Jesus is making in my life. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. I looked it up this week. Did you know in Cobb County alone, 16% of people in Cobb County were not born in our country? 16%. Doesn't seem like a lot. Until you take 16% of 775,000 people, which means that there are 122,000 people in Cobb County alone that were not born in this country, meaning the nations have come to us. Which means we have an opportunity to go on a mission trip every day just by being in our community to reach every ethnicity for the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is why we're doing Lottie Moon Sunday next Sunday. So we're going to learn about missionaries all over the world. We're going to have a, an, an auction and a lunch after this service uh, on next Sunday. And every penny that you give and every penny that we raise and every item that is bought during this auction, every single penny is going to be going to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, which means every penny goes to missionaries around the world who are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. We have an incredible opportunity to give to those who are called to full-time missions just through that Lottie Moon Christmas offering. We have another opportunity right now, which is our Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. You see the red and green shoe boxes around? Every red and green shoe box is going to go to at least one child, and every shoe box is going to have the ability to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to children all around the world. Every shoe box that you grab and you take home and you fill it up with the instructions inside and you bring it back is going to go to a child so that they have the opportunity to know Jesus. If you're not able to take one home, you can go online, you can Google Operation Christmas Child, and you can actually give to where you can build a box online as well. And these are tools that missionaries take into people groups that they wouldn't necessarily be invited to be able to share the gospel Next, real quick, so first we invite them to the gospel. Secondly, very quickly, we invite them to church. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Notice that he first said make disciples, then he said to baptize them, which means this, and he tells us this all throughout the Bible, that the pattern of the gospel is this, to be saved and then to be baptized. To be saved and then to be baptized. I think the light bulb came on in this moment. He said to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I believe the light bulb came on because they were there 
when Jesus was baptized. And they got to hear the voice of the Father as he spoke over the Son. They got to see the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove. All of the Trinity, three in one, present in that same moment. And then Jesus said, now I want you to go and you to do that, to go and baptize. He said to be saved and then to be baptized. There are a lot of Christians today who got baptized before they were truly saved. And I just very lovingly tell them that if you got baptized before you were saved, then I pray that the Spirit of God would move within them. And if that's you, the Spirit of God would move within you to be baptized on the right side of your salvation. Because baptism is the symbol that you've given your life to Jesus. Baptism, you, when you go under the water, you're saying with your body, I believe that Jesus died for my sin. Coming out of the water, you're saying with your body, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. We're saying that this is the gospel. Now that we're picturing it physically, it's because that I've already believed it spiritually. I love that this month, I think we're going to have three out of our children's ministry get baptized. I've been a part of a student camp before where in one night, 96 teenagers got baptized. One of my favorite days of baptism was there was a lady that came up to me in my last church and she said, hey, I, I can't get baptized on a Sunday because I work. I just can't get here. I'm sorry. Would y'all ever baptize me during the week? I said, when I baptize you during the week, I baptize you in the middle of the night. I don't care when I baptize you. If you're called to get baptized, let's get baptized. She said, can I come in at 2 o'clock on Tuesday? I said, I'll see you there. I announced it to the church. I said, she's coming at a 2 o'clock on a Tuesday. If you can come, you come on and we will celebrate her. Another lady came up after I made that announcement. And she said, I'm scared to death of water and of crowds. Could I get baptized on that Tuesday as well at 2 o'clock? I said, sure, come on. Those two ladies brought their families we baptized both ladies. God worked in three other family members, and three other family members got baptized at that same time, too. Baptism is viral. It's contagious. I remember going to a lady's house. I was one of three or four pastors, 94 years old on hospice. As we picked her up by her bed sheet off of her bed, carried her over to her bathroom, dipped her down into her garden tub to baptize her, took her back to her bed. And they told us that she talked about her baptism, that baptism, every single day until she died. Because she had been saved, but she had not been baptized. Jesus calls us as a church to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And what a way to invite people to our church. Have you been saved? The number one most important question in all the world. And the second most important question, have you been baptized? Because baptism is the most important step of obedience after our salvation. And then lastly, and I'm done, we need to invite them to the gospel, invite them to church, and I want to encourage you to invite them to your group, to your Sunday school, to your connection group, to your Bible study, and here's why. Hear me, today people are very skeptical of churches because they have been burned so many times. Often today, people don't start going to worship. Often today, people start going to a group. And it's so important that we invite them wherever they are to get them involved in whatever way they are comfortable and that's why God calls us to have groups and Sunday schools and Bible studies on Sunday mornings, but also on Sunday nights and every other day during the week. And not just groups and Sunday schools and all that at the church facility, but also in workplaces, in homes, and in schools, and all around. Why? Because we want to give people as much opportunity as possible to be able to get in the Word of God and around the people of God so they can experience the power of God. And let me read this last verse, and I'm done. Jesus said, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What is he saying? That it's not your power to accomplish the mission, it's mine. He's saying that he's with us. He's always with us. Whenever I put my little girl, four-year-old baby girl, Brooklyn, to bed, she always looks at me every single night, and she says, Daddy, 
would you sit here just for a minute till I fall asleep? Daddy, would you just sit here for a minute? It takes 15, but that's what she says. Daddy, w- would you just sit here for a minute while I fall asleep? I love it when she says that because that just means she wants to be in my presence. She wants to know that I'm here. In the same way, God is our Father, and he loves for us to desire his presence. Because with his presence comes our protection and our provision along with his presence. Remember one day I had the crazy idea of, um, I told my wife, Michelle, I said, hey, let's, let's take Brooklyn. This is before cruise. I said, let's take Brooklyn to Funville. Funville is one of those indoor playgrounds, slides and swings and rides and all this kind of stuff inside. And it was crazy because our, our little four-year-old baby girl, she has cerebral palsy and she can't walk, she can't crawl, she can't get around on her own. And so Michelle said, how are we going to do this? I said, I'm going to carry her everywhere. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to carry her. My goodness, that was the best workout I ever had in my life. We were going up every staircase, going up every ramp, coming down every slide, going up. And, you know, she wanted to do everything that every other kid wanted to do. She was all smiles and I was all sweat. And at the end of the day, she just said, I had so much in Funville, right? And I, I was thinking to myself, that was a lot of work. But God spoke to me in that moment. And he said, Chip, in the same way, you can't do any of this on your own. It's everything that I am doing through you. You don't have any power. You don't have any ability. You can't do any of this. Anything that is good in you, anything that you do is from me, and it's me through you. So why don't you just trust me and let me do it through you? And it's not just true for me. It's also true for you. We're called to follow Jesus, and we're called to invite others to come along with us. And I can't wait to see how God is going to use you to be able to watch this church grow and to see people saved and to see people baptized because of the way that God uses you just to engage in conversation and to share Jesus and to invite them to church and how God wants to do a work in their life. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe this morning that God just, he has a face and he has a name, he has a person on your heart right here, right now that you are so burdened for, that you so desperately want them to be saved. I want to encourage you just to speak that name to God right now and just say, God, and just call that name out to God in your mind. And say, God, would you use me? God, may I share the gospel in some way this week with that person, God, so that they can know you. And maybe this morning God is speaking to your heart and that you need to give your life over to him. Maybe you've not given your life over to Jesus. And this morning is your morning. Today is your day of salvation. And you, right now, You can pray this, and I can't pray this for you, but I encourage you to pray this in your heart if you need to be saved today. You can pray from your own heart, your own words to God. You can say, God, I believe in Jesus, your son. God, I believe that he died on the cross for my sins, and God, I pray that you would forgive me of all of my sin. God, I turn away from my sin, and I turn and I give my life to Jesus. God, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive and he's real, and I want a relationship with him. And I call on Jesus right now to be the Lord of my life. Jesus, be my Lord, be my master, be my God, be my Savior. And the Bible promises, if you pray that with all of your heart, that you will be saved. Heavenly Father, we love you. And God, we pray in Jesus' name, Father, that you would just do a work in this moment, God, that you would move. Father, I pray that we would worship you. And God, I pray that we would just get to continue to experience you in the way that we follow Jesus and we invite others with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand together and let's sing this last worship song. And let's lift our voices, lift our hearts. If you need to come and talk to me, uh, I'll just be right over here on the side. You can come and talk to me. If you need to come and pray, you can come and pray. Let God work and let God speak.